have you won a lottery before? Do you know how it feels? Well, this is exactly how it feels. But what happens at the end of it all never seems to amaze me. If you're like me living in a poor country, what always comes to mind is money. And having this mentality is where it all begins. Your constant search and desperate need for money will make you do crazy things just to get the money to feed, survive for that day and continue the next money hunt the very next day. And this cycle will go on and on and make no mistake, the lottery companies are very aware of what's happening and are making bank off of these poor people. So this is you. You're broke, you probably don't know how you're gonna survive the next week because you live paycheck to paycheck, your house rent is due and about to expire, bills are coming in from different angles, family members are counting on you to help them with some basic needs. What will you do to get out of this mess you ask yourself? You start thinking and suddenly it dawns on you and you tell yourself, no matter what it takes, I'm gonna make a lot of money. This is a turning point. This is what these lottery companies have all been waiting for. So you start going out more, searching for jobs, looking for gigs to make a little cash, looking at every single billboard on the road to check out for job opportunities. And then you go to the internet to look for solutions to your problems. And the crazy thing about the internet is that everyone is watching your every move. The moment you start looking for ways to make money, the more the algorithms start displaying ads about making money fast. And one thing is for sure, there has never been a way to make money fast overnight. But the greed in you will make you think otherwise. And then, you come across lottery or sport betting, a form of gambling that involves the drawing of numbers at random for a certain amount of price. And most of the times, the prizes are so huge and eye-catching. From a million dollars to hundred million dollars, up to five hundred million dollars. There is no way you're gonna take your eyes away. So you decide to give it a try, at this moment you start thinking of the amount to use for your first trial, you go to their site to place a bet and get your ticket and in this amazing site you will see a lot of testimonials of how people like you have been making millions of dollars with as little as $10 and you didn't even take a little chance to think and reflect why they aren't showing those people who have lost billions of dollars playing lottery because at the end of the day this is a business for them and there's no way these lottery companies will be happy to give away money when they gain nothing. So this is just how they trick you to put in your money by showing you the winnings of others without showing you their losses. And that is how it all begins. In this game, it is either you win or you lose. But one way or the other, people will trick you telling you different strategies of how to win big without experiencing losses. So you start following your strategies, placing different tickets, getting very close to winning and at the end of the day, you lose everything but this first trial is all it takes to start an endless run of betting the reason why it is never easy to stop playing lottery is one you always get close to winning every single time so you tell yourself one more time one more. and that one more time never ends because of the second reason two you want to get your lost money back even if you win a little lottery after playing for a long time if it's not up to the money you have lost you keep playing and then you win but you need more let's say you won a million dollar lottery what will you do with it if i had won 500 million dollars i would give 250 million dollars back to the inner city of detroit to help out with more at-risk youth i would build more community uh centers to help out with the people so they can learn and be something out here pay everything off of my family and then take a then move from the u.s uh i would definitely be living in hawaii uh, i'd probably golfing every day a save and invest it so you don't go broke ever again or b spend it lavishly and enjoy it to the very last penny let the other 250 i probably buy a lamborghini the people you're about to see now are the unlucky people who won the lottery but unfortunately either lost all the money by spending lavishly or got robbed after publicizing their winnings to the masses this is gregory Birch jr a young man who hails from a small city in Georgia, who was working a regular 9-to-5 job as a forklift operator just like the others. He had a girlfriend, two children, and was providing basic amenities for his small family with his job. But he wanted to do more for his family. So one day he decided to try his luck by playing the upcoming Georgia lottery. And by chance, he succeeded. He won the lottery and a $400,000 check was given to him. 
he was interviewed and his story was on the news publicly and one thing is for sure the day you become famous is the day you lose your privacy everyone will be watching your every move after catching out the check he decided to use the money for good first he bought a house for his girlfriend and children then he decided to help the children in the neighborhood by buying toys for them but his good days became bad in the eyes of others people thought he was just flexing his money around and that was how the jealousy and hatred for the lottery winner started and in no time seven people gathered to make a plan and this plan was to take all the money left from Craigie. so on one unfaithful day this arm robbers barged into Craigie's new apartment where he was with his family threatening to kill them if they don't get the money and as the man of the house Craigie begged for them to spare their lives saying he would give them his bank card unfortunately the robbers had no mercy they shot Craigie collected his bank card but spared the lives of his girlfriend and children. Another victim was Jack Whitaker, an American businessman in the construction industry in Putnam County, West Virginia. He wasn't a regular lottery player, but on Christmas Eve 2002, he stopped at a supermarket in West Virginia to get breakfast and fuel for his vehicle. And before leaving, he purchased a winning quick pick ticket for $100. And by luck on Christmas Day, he won and cashed out $100 million after taxes and at the time was the largest jackpot ever won by a single winning ticket in the history of American Lottery. He pledged 10% of his winnings to Christian charities in which one of the beneficiary congregation constructed a multi-million dollar church. He also donated $40 million to establish the Jack Whitaker Foundation, a non-profit organization that provides food and clothing to low-income families in rural West Virginia. He purchased a $123,000 mansion and a jeep and went to the supermarket where he purchased the winning tickets and gave the lady who sold him the ticket a check of $44,000. Later, he bought a Lamborghini and drove it through the neighborhood, drawing cash. Everything was okay for Whitaker, right? Wrong. 2002 was literally the best year of his life but on the 5th of August 2003 the world was collapsing around him he went to a strip club parked his car outside and then thieves broke into his car and made away with his suitcase filled with cash worth $545,000 when Whitaker was asked why would you carry so much money around he responded because I can six months later Whitaker failed to learn from his mistake and once again Thieves broke into his car and this time they made away with $200,000 in cash. But luckily this was later recovered. From then on, his life came crumbling down. A lot of people sued him for one offense or the other, including Caesars Atlantic City Casino after placing a lot of bed there. His granddaughter died and in 2016, his house got burned by fire and the sad part of it all was that the house wasn't insured. Another man who lost everything was Michael Caro, an English former beanman. The story of Caro is very sad. His father was jailed when he was 18 months old in a military prison for 11 years for stabbing a couple after getting into a fight at a dance. His father soon later died from a heart attack after being separated with his mother. He later had several stepfathers, one of them who would lock him up in his room for hours after beating him. He had a very rough childhood which made him join the lottery business. At 13, he was sentenced to prison for shoplifting and at 19, he won the lottery. At this time, he was employed as a part-time bin man. After the big win, Carl didn't have a bank account so the lottery company recommended him to Coots to get one. But Coots refused his application which Carl later claims it was because of his criminal record. Soon after, Carl made up his mind not to spend the money lavishly and only wanted to buy a three-bedroom house near a lake where he could go fishing. As a fan of Rangers, he invested up to £1 million of his winnings via Rangers Financial Management. He set up a £3.9 million investment bond, which generated monthly income and was advised to use this account only if funds from his regular accounts were gone. He was very generous and gave his mother, aunt and his sister £1 million each and claimed by September 2003 he had to start living off the bond. At this point, everything was perfect. He participated in a celebrity boxing match, which he got defeated and was a subject to the documentary Michael Caro, King of Chaps. And in 2006, his life came crashing down. He was jailed for nine months for a fray. The BBC also reported that he was almost broke, having spent his fortune on new homes, drugs, parties, jewelries, and cars. But Caro subsequently denied 
rumors that he had no money left. While living at his mansion in Swafam, five of his dogs were found dead and he had to pay £130,000 to blackmailers who threatened to kill his family and since then he took off in his car and never went back to Swafam and in May 2010 he reapplied for his old job as a part-time bin man. Now you see the problem about the lottery, it is literally a lose or lose game. When you lose a bet, you try again and again and again and when you eventually win a fat check, you either spend all the money lavishly to the very last dollar or you get robbed and lose everything. Honestly, the only way to win a lottery is to never play a lottery. If you don't want to be a drunkard, don't drink. If you want to keep your lungs safe, don't smoke. If you want to be rich and successful, then work hard. There is no way you'll be able to use $100 to make a million dollars overnight doing nothing and expect it to have no consequences. Sure, there are people who have won a million dollar lottery and are still rich till this very day. People like Brad Duke who doubled his lottery money by investing in oil, gas, real estate and lorries bonds. Or Peter Levery, a former bus driver who tripled his lottery money when he ventured into a whiskey investment and now has more than 30 properties. Or Yankee Hinks, who is now a proud owner of a subway restaurant that now earns him a stable income. The best thing you can do is to never start playing lottery or involve yourself in betting or gambling because at the end of the day, it is a dark rabbit hole and if you become a victim, there is no going back. But if you are already involved, then bet what you can only afford to lose. And if you can't quit, and you eventually win a million dollar lottery, then this is exactly what you should do to remain wealthy. So the first thing you want to do. I think the very first thing that the lottery winners need to do. Uh, the first thing I tell them to do is be quiet. I'm going to say that the very first thing you should do is exactly nothing. Is hire yourself a good accountant, a good financial planner, and a good lawyer. Put it in the bank. You know, when you hit it, don't tell anybody for a long time because everybody has a ten and twenty thousand dollar problem. Uh, go get a great, great financial advisor because the majority of a lot of winners lose it right away. If I were to advise you, I would say for one year, don't do anything with your money. Don't think about it. Don't use it. Don't quit your job. Don't buy stuff. Don't give stuff away. Don't loan it. Don't do anything with it. All right, here's the number one thing you don't do. All right, I know they're going to want to go to the top of their roof and scream, I'm the new billionaire. Right. But uh, stay quiet. Thank you so much for watching this video to the very end and as a bonus watch this video next there are a lot of things you are going to learn from it like this video and subscribe so i can see you in my next video peace